63 amps outside. Even though it's cloudy and rainy this morning. It's some light, mild rain since yesterday. No sun at all. I have driven down the battery shelf to 14% yesterday morning and had to connect some of my spare batteries. They're all resting there at about 60 to 70% state of charge. It is all stored sunlight and now I need it. Guys, welcome back to another video here from the Offcut Garage in rainy Australia. Yeah, not sunny hot anymore, nothing. 26 degrees, it's nice and cool inside the garage. Yeah, this, this uh, weather situation now has shown me again, once again, that these three battery banks are not enough for my energy hunger. I can barely, barely make it over two days without sun in these cloudy conditions. What do you have? 4.2 kilowatts at the moment and almost 700 from the tilt system. So close to 5 kilowatt. That's actually not too bad, right? But still, we've got the pool, we've got hot water, we've got the electric vehicle and other appliances running inside the house. And of course, we have the CKE EBC A20 sodium battery tester running for, well. So this test here now actually took me five days or so to finalize. And thank you so much for hundreds of comments under the last couple of videos about the sodium batteries here. Lots of questions, lots of comments, lots of interest in this battery chemistry. And I must say, I'm still a bit undecided how to feel about sodium batteries. So I'll keep testing to answer more questions. And today's test is no exception. Some of you have already asked under the videos, how does absorption work with these sodium batteries? And this is exactly the test I have done in the last five days. So I finalized all the testing already because I don't want to bother you to death with showing you the task sequence of the EBC A20 tester in the computer software. Charging, discharging. So let me show you what I've done. This test is about absorbing sodium batteries. Should we absorb them? How long do we absorb? Does it make sense? What's the difference between absorbing or not absorbing? So all this will be covered in this test here. So I'll show you the task sequence I have done here to conclude this test. So here in this example, I have charged the battery to 2.8 volts, only 2.8 volts. The current charging and discharging is always 0.65 volts, so 0.5C. So we first fully charge the battery to 2.8 volts with a cutoff of 0.65 amps. So this means there was no absorption time. The next test obviously is then the discharge from this point down to 1.5 volts and measuring the capacity. Then we fully charge the battery again to 2.8 volts, but this time we cut off at 0.1 amps. So we fully absorb this battery. And then we discharge the battery down to 1.5 volts and measure the capacity again. So we've got one capacity without absorption and one capacity with absorption. What is the difference in capacity gain if we absorb these sodium batteries from two volts all the way up to 3.9 volts? So in here you can see these, I call it the poop pile test because it looks like two piles of, um, well in the first cycle we fully charged the battery to 2.8 volts, cut off immediately, started discharging, took the measurement of the capacity all the way down to 1.5 volts started charging again immediately and this time we hold the voltage at 2.8 volts until the charge current see that goes down 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 to 0.1 volts so this is the absorption phase of the second cycle no absorption here fully absorbing here what is the difference in capacity between these two methods charging to the same voltage and i have put all the results into this table here now i've done the test charging the battery to 2 volts, to 2.1 volts, to 2.2 volts. 0.1 volt increments all the way down to 3.95 volts of so fully charging. And here's the result. So obviously the maximum capacity we get out of this cell is if we charge to 3.95 volts and let the battery absorb until the current goes down to 0.1 amps. This 1315 milliampere hours is my 100% for this test. Blue is without absorption, red is with absorption. So charging to two volts without absorption gives me only one milliampere hour of capacity. 
Yeah, the tester turns off immediately, basically. But if I let this cell absorb at two volts until the current goes down to 0.1 amps, I'm getting four milliampere hours out of this cell. So four times more, that's a huge win. And I've done the same test for all the other voltages as well. And of course, I put all the data into a chart. So the blue line again is without absorption, the red line is with absorption. And you can see these two lines are mostly parallel. Yeah? So the gain I'm having absorbing these sodium cells is the same at 2.3 volts or up here at 3.8 volts. It doesn't matter. The distance between these lines is almost the same. They are in parallel. There's a bit of difference here in this plateau area of the sodium battery, but this could be temperature or other influences on the tester. So there's a bit of variation here, but mostly these two lines are fairly parallel. So looking at the curve, that means absorbing these sodium cells doesn't actually make much sense because the capacity gain is very small. And I'll show you how small it is. Charging to 3 volts, for example, gives you 560 milliampere hours or 606 milliampere hours with absorption. So this would be 42.6% or 46.1%. Charging to 3.8, 1212 milliampere hours or 92.2%. And over here, we've got 94.7%. Not much difference. 2.4 volt, 6%. 9.5%. So, and the second take from this here, how to charge your sodium batteries if you want to charge them to 80% only. 80% is here, so 3.6 volts would be your 80%. Or 84% with absorption. Gives you a little bit more capacity, because some people are still afraid they don't want to charge these batteries too high, even with lithium iron phosphate, and they want to charge them only to 80%. Well, we know charging lithium ion phosphate to 80% makes no sense. It's not even possible unless you count the ampere hours. While here with sodium batteries, you can actually do that because you have a defined voltage you charge your battery to, and then it has 80% of the capacity reached. So this behavior of sodium batteries is very, very different from lithium ion phosphate. We have done tons of tests here with lithium ion phosphate batteries on this channel, charging these batteries to different voltages with and without absorption, measuring the capacity and found out absorbing makes a huge difference at certain voltages with lithium ion phosphate. I link some of these videos down below. All the data and graphs are on my website as well, free to download. So some people are a bit afraid to use their batteries and they want to use them only between 20 and 80% state of charge. Well, with sodium batteries, you can do that. Charge them to 2.8 volts and you are at 19% state of charge. Charge them to 3.6 volts and you are at 80% state of charge. So now, all of a sudden, you have a very narrow voltage delta you use with your battery. And this could actually work much better with your inverters, as we have discussed in the previous video. But then you're only using 60% of the usable capacity of your battery. So you are not much better off than with lead acid batteries, because there you use a maximum of 50% only. Otherwise it damaged the battery already and shortens the cycle life. So here it seems sodium batteries pretty much act the same as NMC batteries. Linear voltage curve and almost no capacity gain with absorption. And here's a question for you, the community. It's not hard to answer actually. Looking at this table and at this graph, do we actually need to charge these sodium batteries to a higher voltage and let them sit there for absorption and also for a balancer to do its job? Like we do with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now we charge to a 3.45 or a bit higher, let the battery absorb and this is where the balancer starts working. What about these sodium batteries? What do you think? Leave your comments down below, keen to read them. The answer is not difficult if you look at the table and the graph as well. And from what you know between the difference between lithium ion phosphate and sodium batteries. And we want to exactly test this out in one of the next videos as well. We want to build a 12 volt battery out of these sodium cells and then charge, discharge them and use different balances on this battery. See how the battery reacts? What kind of balancer do we need for these cells? So the conclusion of this test here is now. Absorbing sodium batteries makes almost no sense. 
there's very little capacity gain if you absorb these cells. Charging to 3.8 volts gives you either 1212 or 1245. That's 92.2 or 94.7% of the maximum capacity. So there's not much gain. Okay guys, so far this test number three with the sodium batteries. I will link the spreadsheet with the table and graph as some of the poop pile curves as well on my website. The link is down under the video. As always, feel free to download them. Check them out using the EB tester software. So absorption, not a big thing with sodium. Oh wow. That took me like five days now to make this 15 minute video. Unbelievable. But as always, very, very interesting. And I don't think you'll find this information anywhere else out there. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. For all these hundreds of comments under the last couple of videos. Wow. I haven't read them all. They are just too many. But um, I'm making good progress, actually. And thank you very much to all these beautiful people who have donated to the channel as well. Buying me a beer. Still getting emails, people asking me what spat means. Well, you can buy one of these t-shirts and the answer is included. So you never forget again. <laughs> Until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. There you go. No absorption with sodium batteries. Makes it a lot easier. Or maybe not.